to speak to your earlier point about um, asking women to take off the hijab, I would never do that because I myself, when I chose to take off the hijab, I was threatened with death by my family. Hmm. And as you know, Aksa Parvez, a 16 year old girl in Mississauga, Ontario, was killed by her family, strangled by her father because she refused to wear the hijab. So I would never ask women to take off their hijabs because I know how dangerous that decision would be. Wow. So that just speaks to how we cannot have opposing protests. Their protest is saying, put on a hijab. I can't say take off a hijab right. because I know that there are women that could potentially be killed for that. So what I'm saying instead is I support those women. I support the women that would be in danger of being abused, tortured, imprisoned, or killed for taking off the hijab. Uh, and these women, of course, are Muslim women. They're yeah. not non-Muslim women. These are Muslim women that are fighting their own societies, that are fighting the, the patriarchy within their own families, within their own communities, and that want to have the freedom to live. Of course, they want to have the freedom to live life freely. All of us do. Why would they be any different? Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, recall reading a statistic that in at least certain parts of Paris, uh, almost 80% of women who wore these coverings, and I know they've since been legislation in France to ban them. Uh, I think the number was 77%, I'd have to Google it, uh, felt a form of compulsion to do so, either the threat of violence, or at the very least, the threat of being expelled from their mosque, the community, even from their husband's home. So the idea that they're making a voluntary choice while under duress, we, we in the West have the concept that you can't agree to something if you don't have free will. If you're, if you're forced to sign a contract with a gun to your head, that's not genuinely your will. It's called compulsion or duress. Um, and the argument I heard was when you, if you were to ban the burqa, what you actually do is you empower those 77% of women to say to the bullies in their life who are invariably men, to say, look, I, you know, I'd like to do that, but I can't because the police say I can't. Oh, it's too bad. I can't be bullied by you. Sorry. So it's actually providing a stronger way out for women who on their own would be vulnerable to this pressure. Yeah, I would have loved actually to have been able to say that to my family and to my ex-husband. Like, oh, sorry, can't wear it. It's against the law. Nothing we can do about it. It's not my choice. But at the end of the day, the, when you talk about the violence that these women could be subjected to, yes, there is violence that could happen to them here by their husbands, by their fathers, etc. But then there's also the threat of burning in hell for eternity. So even if you remove the threats here on earth, these women who are indoctrinated, are still going to be feeling like they could potentially burn in hell for the rest of eternity. You know, to talk about the indoctrination a little bit, we, you have to realize that this is put on children. It's put on you as a young girl. And then when you grow up as an adult and you decide to take it off, you don't get that choice. Right. So it, there's really, when we talk about choice, that means you have the choice to put it on and you have the choice to take it off. And as we know from just, I mean, a quick Google search will show you how many women are imprisoned, killed, tortured, abused, stoned, all sorts of horrible things happen to women who take it off. In fact, in the United Kingdom, there's a Muslim woman by the name of Dina Tokyo, and she is a model, and she's a, she's a hijabi model, and she's decided to take off the hijab. And the amount of filth and violence and threats that have been thrown in her direction, she has a video on YouTube where she does nothing but just read the hate. Wow. And that video is almost an hour long. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day, I do a video monologue, and then I interview an interesting guest. And then I end by reading my hate mail, but you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.